Dunking a basketball is one of the most captivating things you can do as an athlete, especially if you're under six feet tall. Anyone who's ever played basketball has likely fantasized at least once about what it would be like to dunk during a game. The only problem is less than 1% of people in the world can probably dunk. And in this video, we're gonna dive into the science to understand if sprinting can help you dunk. Just as thrilling as dunking a basketball is, so is crossing the finish line in first place. It's well documented in multiple research papers that there's a strong correlation between fast sprint times and a high vertical. This includes a counter movement jump where the athlete drops their body weight before jumping into the air, and also a squat jump where the athlete jumps from a static squat position. Although correlation does not mean causation there are several logical reasons why we could argue that improved sprinting leads to improved jumping. Let's take a look at some of the key characteristics behind a significant vertical. One, the ability to produce a high amount of force in a short amount of time. Two, a high amount of fast twitch fibers present in the athlete. Three, triple extension at the ankle, knee, and hip joints. These are all the same characteristics behind fast sprint times. Sprinting requires you to put a high amount of force into the ground in a short period of time. Sprinting is a fast twitch movement, and every push off during the sprint requires extension at the hip, knee, and ankle. Also, if we were to conduct a lab study with two of the most explosive athletes in the world, for example, Safa Powell, who has an amazing block start, and Michael Jordan, who's known for flying in the air, we would likely find that both of their bodies are very effective at using the stretch and shortening cycle. If you're familiar with sports science, then you already know what this is. If you never heard of it, no, it's not one of those cycles. This is when a muscle is rapidly lengthened before rapidly shortened, much like a rubber band. The SSC is believed to improve performance by first storing elastic energy during the lengthening phase, then releasing it during the shortening phase through the stretch reflex. And the science suggests that the more you train this mechanism, the more effective it becomes at both storing and activating this energy. The most popular way of training the stretch and shortening cycle is typically through various jump exercises, also known as plyometrics. But the SSC also occurs during other movements, such as sprinting. Every single time the foot strikes the ground, the body is using the stretch and shortening cycle in the leg muscles to hit the ground and push off. According to research to improve vertical jump performance, a combination of plyometrics and weight training is ideal. Both of these methods are used in standard sprint training. With that being said, from what I understand, dunking a basketball is a lot more than just having a high vertical. It also entails having correct jump technique, controlling your body in the air, and gripping the ball securely. Maybe tough for a person below six feet, but not impossible. There's plenty of videos here on YouTube alone where guys are 5'5 five, five successfully dunking. I'm not implying that sprint training should replace a program designed to specifically improve your vertical. If that is your main goal, I recommend checking out someone like PJF Performance. What I am seeing is that improving your vertical is potentially an additional benefit of sprint training, along with a ton of other benefits, which are even more valuable that you can see by clicking on this video. It covers the top five benefits of sprinting and benefit number four might surprise you.